Did you know there is a volcano in Louisiana? No? Well, there is. This is not clickbait. If you live in Louisiana, there is a volcano in your state. In this hopefully short video, I'm going to tell you all about this volcano. With 65 coming out soon, which I'm looking forward to, see my video about the movie if you want to know why, I thought it would be fun to talk about something from the Cretaceous era. So we'll be talking about Louisiana's Door Point Volcano. This is just a little quick project I can put out while my next documentary about Helicoprion is in production. Which is taking a bit longer than usual, but that's fine. I think it'll be a good video that's worth the wait. I like the script a lot, and there's a lot of cool information I'll be sharing. So for now, I'll just put out this quick video to give you something new to enjoy in the meantime. If you like paleo-related content, check out some of my other paleo documentaries, or my original written stories narrated on YouTube that are full of prehistoric fauna. I'll link two of them in the description, and those should give you an idea of what they're about. And again, this is not going to be as long as my other documentaries or my next upcoming one. I just want to make one that's a quick watch and an interesting topic to learn about. And again, just to give you something new to enjoy while my next bigger video is being developed. Okay, let's talk about Louisiana's long-forgotten volcano. First, though, let's talk about Louisiana as a whole during the Cretaceous itself to get a bigger picture into the region and what it was like while this volcano was active. I feel like establishing a little context is important, especially since this volcano would have affected the lives of animals in the region at the time. In this section, before I explain the volcano itself, I'm going to cover the animals that existed in the Cretaceous in the same region as it. This video is in chapters, so if you want to get right to the volcano, feel free to skip ahead. So first off, what everyone wants to know. Any dinosaurs? Well, let me give you a hint. The state fossil is petrified wood. Hey, that's still cool. I found petrified wood while hiking in Spring Mill State Park twice. In the same creek. In the same spot, but months apart. The state fossil of Louisiana is a rod-like piece of palm wood. The genus of this type of palm has in fact been, been found around the world. So they had trees, but dinosaurs? No dinosaurs, unfortunately. Now to be fair, we don't know if dinosaurs never lived in Louisiana, but if they did, we haven't found any fossils of them. For most of the Cretaceous era, Louisiana and a lot of the Midwest all the way up to southwestern Indiana was covered in a shallow sea. So they didn't crash there in 65. So with most of the state covered in an ocean for nearly all of the Cretaceous, it means dinosaurs didn't live in most of the state, if any of it. However, the state certainly had its own unique biodiversity at the time, but we don't know a lot. The issue is that most of the state is covered in Cenozoic rock, and the only exposed Cretaceous rock are in a few places. Northern Louisiana is one such place, but no dinosaur fossils have been found there either. But, but we know some of the dinosaurs which lived around the state, so it's possible some of these would have been present in Louisiana at the time. Now, since we only really know the last general time period that the volcano erupted and not the entire time it was active or when it formed, I'm going to cover animals that existed in and around the region throughout the Cretaceous as a whole, and not just the general point in time when we know this volcano last erupted. Again, we don't know how long it was active and as far as, as, far as I know, so let's explore the Cretaceous as a whole when it comes to the animals that existed at, in the area at the time. So what dinosaurs lived around Louisiana and maybe in the state itself? Such dinosaurs include Archanthrosaurus, which has been found in Texas, Arkansaurus, which is actually the state dinosaurs of Arkansas, along with other dinosaurs found in that state, such as Sauroposidon, Nodosauria, Dinosuchus. Other dinosaurs that you also might have found in Louisiana include some that have been found in Mississippi like Ceratopsians, Parasaurus, and Soranotholesti. We've also found ripples from the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs in Louisiana rock, so there's that too. Some marine animals from the Cretaceous found in Alabama, part of which was under the same shallow sea which covered most of Louisiana, so it's, it's reasonable that these animals could have lived just a few hundred miles to the west as well, include Zithectenus, along with Protocephalina, 
I think I pronounced that right, but it's a swordfish-like thing with a wicked set of teeth. There is also Anchotus, another fish with a wicked set of teeth. And then there are also marine invertebrates like ammonites found in Alabama, so it's likely that they also lived in the shallow ocean off of Louisiana. Again, it's the same shallow sea and only a few hundred miles to the west of where these fossils were found. In Alabama, there were also mosasaurs and plesiosaurs, and the giant crocodile Dinosuchus, who some of you might remember from my video about prehistoric crocodiles, specifically the prehistoric crocodile that essentially evolved into a duck. No joke, check that video out. A transitional member of the Tyrannosaur family, also known as Appalachosaurus, also lived in the region of Alabama that was above water. So again, it is reasonable to think that they might have also lived a few hundred miles west as well along the Louisiana coastline, but there is no evidence for this because there are no dinosaur fossils from the state, so we have to speculate here. That is paleontology for you. We had to speculate a lot. In this case, I'm trying to reconstruct a whole ecosystem. There were also notosaurs found in Alabama, along with small chicken-sized raptors. So again, it's possible that they also existed a few hundred miles to the west as well. Anyway, as for animals that we do have fossils of from the state, and not just speculation of what could have lived there, uh, well, we have marine invertebrates and sharks. So Louisiana was playing Jaws in real life 66 million years before the movie ever came out. Nice. And that's it, aside from a few others and some plants. The issue is that most of the Cretaceous era rock and fossils in the state are only accessible in a few places where salt domes have pushed up through the Cenozoic rock sediments. But for the most part, newer Cretaceous rock is locked under layers of Cenozoic rock, and older layers of Cretaceous era rock are locked away under newer Cretaceous era rock. So yeah, we have a lot of rocks blocking rocks here, so we don't know a lot. But I think that's enough for the fauna that could have and did live in the area. So let's get to what you all clicked on this video for. The Door Point Volcano is not visible. It's not like Mount St. Helens or Mount Vesuvius where you can just walk up to it and have a look. This one is buried and under the ocean. It's off the coast of St. Bernard Parish and last erupted during the Cretaceous era. It also would have still been under the ocean at that time. It last erupted sometime between 74 and 90 million years ago. Wow, so even if they did crash in Louisiana in 65, they would have missed it. Though, going by the trailers, this volcano would be the least of their worries. Anyway, so within that 16 million year time gap is when this thing last erupted. So that would place it in either the the Conication or the Campanian Ages of the late Cretaceous. Well, here are those terms again, because remember, I'm making a big Cretaceous documentary at some point, probably this summer. And again, we have such a big time gap when this eruption, this last eruption would have occurred, because the rocks are so old that we can only narrow down the dates to certain points. It's not like Mount Vesuvius, which is much more recent, and where we can pinpoint you know, the time and say, oh, it erupted in 79 AD and then again in 1631 and 1660 AD. With older rocks, it's not like that. Dating is much harder and we can only narrow things down to certain windows and points in time. So something like a volcanic eruption last occurring, in this case, this is the closest we can get is to narrow it down to that 16 million year span of time from 74 to 90 million years ago. Now the volcano, we only discovered because we drilled into it. Yeah. The Shell Oil Company discovered the volcano in one of their wells. Running at over 8,500 feet deep, the last 1,300 feet of the drilled rock was cored right through volcanic material. The volcano is a submarine volcano, which are underwater vents and fissures in the surface of the Earth's crust from which magma can erupt. They're common on the ocean floor. Today, there might be over a million active ones around the world. And as far as I know, with the limited information that exists about Door Point, it likely always was a submarine volcano. I don't think there's any evidence that it formed above land and then sank. 
Most of these types of volcanoes are found on or near mid-ocean ridges. The Door Point Volcano was discovered in either the early 1960s or in the 1970s. I saw different dates from distant, different sources. The American Association of Petroleum Geologists said it was the 1960s, and the, Geo the Geological Society of America said it was the 1970s. Either way, Door Point has received little study since then, according to the Geological Society of America. It is the only known volcano in the northern and northwestern region of the Gulf of Mexico. Asphalt volcanoes do exist elsewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, though, the first ones being found at a depth of 3,000 meters below the surface. Mud volcanoes have also been found in the Gulf of Mexico as well. Like I said, the Door Point volcano represents the only observed subsurface occurrence of one in Cretaceous-era rock in the region, Given the amount of oil rigs and platforms in that region of the Gulf of Mexico, if there were other volcanoes like this around, then I'd say we probably would have found them by now. The volcano also has no identified base, according to the informational logs provided by the Shell Oil Company. However, there is an interesting additional fact, which I will read from an article put out by the American Association of Petroleum Geologists. Quote, Although evidence of late Cretaceous volcanic activity is widespread in northern Louisiana, as well as in Mississippi, and southeast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico, the Door Point Prospect lies within an area that had been previously designated as being free of volcanism. Unquote. Very interesting. And since no other oil platforms, as you can see from the map, there are a lot in the area that the volcano is in, have drilled into another one, then this volcano was by itself, which is not uncommon, but it's interesting that one formed here, but nowhere else around it. Anyway, that is the volcano in Louisiana. I wish we knew more, but there's just not much information on it because not much research has been done on it. And don't worry about this thing erupting again some someday. This volcano is extinct. An extinct volcano is basically a volcano that scientists agree is unlikely to ever erupt again due to it no longer having access to a supply of magma. And this one hasn't erupted for the entire Cenozoic era and for the last 10-ish million years of the Cretaceous on top of that. So if it hasn't in all that time, I don't think it will again. I think that's a reasonable conclusion. So don't worry. If you live in Louisiana and were worried since I told you there was a volcano in your state, don't worry. It won't blow up again. Yellowstone will do that for all of us, but not this one. The Door Point Volcano is not and will not ever be a danger to anyone. Other volcanoes in the U.S., like Mount St. Helens, may present dangers in the future. Yes, but not this one. So drill into it all you want. It's fine. All right, well, I hope you found that interesting. I wish there was more to say on this, but there's just not a lot of information about it. And again, this was just a short topic that I decided to share while my other ongoing project about Helicoprion gets a little bit further along in production. I'm actually hoping to have a friend on Discord do some art for that video, so you might be seeing some fully original art of the featured animal in that documentary. In the meantime, check out some of my other paleo documentaries. I, I linked the ones I've done so far below. You can also check out the full documentary playlist on my channel which covers a wide range of topics from cryptids to historical mysteries. So I'm curious, if anyone watching is from Louisiana, did you know there was a volcano in your state? Sure, technically it's off the coast, but it's still in your state. I'm just curious about how many of you knew this fact. This isn't something that very many people seem to be aware of. Anyway, hopefully one day this volcano will get some more research done on it and we can learn more about it. Anything that can help us learn about what the Earth was like in prehistoric times, in this case during the late Cretaceous, is worth researching, I think. It, it's another piece that can help us build a more complete picture of the past and what life was like for the animals that existed back then. For now, though, there is just not a lot. Uh, there's not much online to read about with this topic. The Wikipedia article is a single paragraph. And this isn't the oldest volcano that we know of, either. I think that honor goes to an extinct one we've dated to be nearly half a billion years old. 
There's not much to talk about that one, though, so don't expect a video on it. I found a paragraph again. <laughs> What you can expect in the future is my big documentary covering the animal fauna of the Cretaceous era. I'll cover five animals, anything from dinosaurs, reptiles, marine animals, uh, birds, mammals, plants, and so on, from each age of the Cretaceous, meaning we will have 60 animals by the end of it. And that will be my biggest project after the Loch Ness Monster documentary, and I will probably begin working on the research for it during the summer. So stay tuned for that, and before that though, I will be making more paleo and prehistory focused videos, uh, smaller ones about individual animals, so stick around for those if you like this kind of content, and in the meantime, check out my other documentaries. I cover, again, a wide range of topics, so I'm sure you'll find one you're interested in. Okay, with all that being said, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next documentary, my helicoprion, the shark-like fish with a buzzsaw for a jaw video. I look forward to it, and I hope you will enjoy it. Like and subscribe if you like this content, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, all.